A Hidden People contains mature language, content, and themes. Please listen with care. Dayton Writers Movement presents The Hidden People, starring Jordan Lopez, Stephen Gogol, Sean Gunther, Xander Hildenbrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Luna Madison. Season 2, Episode 12, Asymmetry. Written by Chris Burnside. Directed by Chris and Megan Burnside. Also starring Megan Burnside, Aaron Eckout Lopez, Danielle Gunther, and Mary Snap. Hi, McKenna. Thomas. Have a seat. I know how this works. Thank you. I'm fine with her. You could just wait outside. You haven't visited for some time. I'm sorry I haven't visited as regularly as I would like. A few weeks ago we had uh, something really big to deal with. But it's over now. We're trying to move on. I've enjoyed your absence. I see. Would you rather I didn't come? What you do is of no concern to me. Well, I guess maybe I'll stop visiting you. I call your bluff. Yeah, okay. But I'll still visit. You lack conviction. This is only one of your weaknesses. You say conviction, but all I hear is stubbornness. I'm not so prideful that I'll never visit you again for calling my bluff. You know nothing. Actually, I know a lot about stubbornness. I grew up with your sister. She is not my sister. We share no relation. The, the other McKenna, then. But you know, I'm your brother, and I'm her brother. Doesn't that sound related to you? No. It sounds stupid. You sound stupid. Ah, sometimes the resemblance is uncanny. We are nothing alike. She is not my sister. Okay, okay. Your voice sounds a bit different. I think you're losing your accent. Or picking up ours. I'm not sure how that works. I do what I must to not attract unnecessary attention. Right. What have you been up to in here? How's your therapy? Therapy is for the weak. I spin lies for the doctor. I cannot tell him the truth about Arcadia, the hidden people. I cannot tell him that an evil copy of me that you call my sister killed my adopted father with a giant bell. So I lie. According to him, honesty is the key to successful therapy. I can see where that part would be hard. What else are you doing? Have you read any other books? I have begun reading Moby Dick. I appreciate Ahab. Yeah, that tracks. I have also begun to watch television. I thought you didn't like television. I found it strange at first. Confusing. My eyes jump around the apartments so quickly. Eyes? Apartments? Uh, do you mean when the camera cuts to another angle? Perhaps. What apartments? Monica's and Rachel's. Chandler's and Joey's. Occasionally Ross's. <laughs> You're watching Friends? I'm watching television. Yes. Okay. Friends is a show on television. Do you watch anything else? 
once I have watched Phoebe's apartment. And frequently I watch the cafe known as Central Perk. That's all still friends. I do not think you understand television. Well, I've also seen Friends. It's a good show, isn't it? I do enjoy watching them. I would not call them my friends, though. You are friends with them. I mean, they're not actually my friends, but sometimes, I guess, if the show is good enough, you kind of imagine what it would be like to know those people. I do know them. I watch them frequently. You know what? I feel like the explanation isn't worth it. I'm glad you know them and enjoy watching them. I like Monica. She is direct and ruthless and keeps things tidy. Really? That's... I've never actually imagined you watching Friends, so I guess I never thought about which characters you would like. Chandler is stupid. He is weak and tries to compensate with humor, which is foolish. Humor is a terrible weapon in a stupid pastime. At some later date... I will explain the irony of that statement. Joey is one of the hidden people. Huh? Joey. He is one of the hidden people. I don't follow. He has the powers of the hidden. He commands the minds of the weak. Joey? From friends. He speaks magic words and works his will. Magic words. How you doing? <laughs> oh. Weak-willed women then submit to him for carnal pleasures. Just like the hidden people. <laughs> oh, that's... That's actually really disturbing. What is? Maybe... Maybe talk to your therapist about that. Just don't mention the hidden people directly. I maintain their secrets in this place. I'm sure it will not save me forever. Were the Magister still alive, he would have had me killed by now. That's not going to happen. You're safe in here. The reach of the hidden people extends far into your world. Many humans are under their sway without even knowing it. Money, power, sex. Humans have simple desires. The hidden people exploit them. Like Joey. Well, the Magister is gone. You don't have anything to worry about. I do not worry. Uh, what else have you been doing? I have a job. Really? I work in the kitchen. You can cook? I can. I mostly clean after, though. But it makes me useful. Unlike my new cellmate, I earn my food. My books. My television. You have a new cellmate? Cassandra. She goes by Cassie. Which is a baby's name. Is she nice? She is weak. She cries every night. She cannot fight. Please don't tell me you fought her. I do not fight. It is against the rules. I have only needed to defend myself once. After that, no one wishes to fight me. So who is Cassie fighting? Cassandra could not fight a wall. She is being beaten for sport by other inmates. That's not good. You should talk to her. Try to make her feel better. Maybe ask the other ladies to back off. Why? Because that's what people do. We help each other. We have empathy. She is weak. She cannot help herself. How is that my responsibility? You are stronger than her. With that strength comes responsibility to help those weaker than yourself. You are a fool. After Moby Dick, maybe see if they have any Spider-Man. Spiders are spies for the hidden people. They... they are? <laughs> no, but you were very scared. Did... did you just... did you just make a joke? No. Humor is a stupid pastime. <laughs> yes, you did. You made a joke. I am done with this visit. Guard! No, 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 don't be sore. Thought it was really funny. I would like to return to myself, please. Okay, okay. I'm sorry I laughed. I'll try to visit in a couple weeks. I hope that's all right. Bye, McKenna. Goodbye, Thomas.
<laughs> Enough. I am attempting to read. Your infantile sobbing distracts me. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a problem for you, too. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Stop crying. Stop crying! S sorry. Stop apologizing. I just want to read. I have no interest in your demands for forgiveness. Sorry. I mean... You know. I know that I will kill you if you continue to disturb me. This is what I know. What are you reading? Moby Dick. I love Moby Dick. You have read it. I've taught it. You taught it what? No, I mean I taught it in school. I'm an English teacher. I'm... I mean... I was an English teacher. If you start crying again, I will break your legs, so they need to put you in a cell on the ground level. I don't mean to be a pain. This is really hard for me. Perhaps you should have trained harder. <laughs> trained like in a gym? Trained to fight, to survive. How did you spend your childhood? Um, like a normal kid? In school with friends? I fought for everything I've ever had, and now I am rewarded. I am provided food, shelter, books, Monica, and her companions. Wait, you think prison is reward? We fight for nothing here so long as the wolves know you are not a sheep. Please, Cassandra, explain to me what your utopia looks like. Well, it's certainly not a prison. This isn't a perfect place. It's more like a YA dystopian horror show. A lie you tell yourself because you are weak. I'm not weak. Just because I never learned how to punch someone? Just because I don't want to hurt anybody? Those things don't make me weak. Look around you. This place is filled with warriors. If you cannot fight, you do not belong. Yeah, well, tell that to my jury. What do you mean? Well, I was convicted, wasn't I? That's why I'm in here and not at home making lesson plans. Did you not do what they accused you of? Are you held here against your will? This is prison. Everyone is here against their will. That is not true. <laughs> Have you spoken to anyone else in here? No. The extent of my communication with the other inmates was sending six of them to the infirmary when they attacked me in my first week. Wait, you really don't talk to anyone? You don't have any friends here? You all throw that word around like it should mean something. What is a friend? A person you willingly allow to betray you? Where were your friends when you were put in here? Some of them turned on me during the trial, but some of them are still my friends. They stayed loyal to me. And honestly, I don't blame the others. I don't know if I would believe my story either. I do not care to hear your story of woe and weakness. I shot my husband to death. I murdered my parents and tried to murder my brother and the impos... My sister. Are you trying to compete with me? No. I have already won. Did they... Um... Deserve it? They abandoned and replaced me. Supposedly. I am uncertain as to who has been lying to me. Probably everyone. Alan deserved it. That was my husband. He hit me. Hit our son. He was a high-functioning alcoholic. You allowed him to strike you before killing him? He beat me for years. And you finally retaliated, which resulted in his death. Yes. Look at me, Cassandra. You cry over your actions and their consequences. You mourn your old life. But you must understand something. You are weak. You were nothing. You allowed someone to abuse you for years without defending yourself. You had years to plan your reclamation, and yet you stupidly shot him and were immediately caught. You don't even deserve this place and its amenities. If I were allowed, I would take your life now to spare your son. The continued shame of having such a sad and pathetic mother. So cry over your fate. Cry over your child. Cry over the inmates who beat you like Alan did. But do it quietly. 
because I want to read. <laughs> Have you thought any further about what we discussed last time? No. But you realize that we're trying to find a way to help you, to move forward through your anger. I do not care. I think if you were able to let go of some of that anger, you might understand how much better you could feel. My anger does not control me. I'm very content in this place. Most people don't acclimate so quickly to this kind of life. I do not know why everyone is so confused by me. I wouldn't say confused. I'm glad you don't feel so angry at the least. Who else has been confused by your feelings? Cassandra, my new cellmate. She doesn't share your contentment? She is weak and a terrible person with whom to live. You sound angry. I thought you were happier. I'm only angry because of her. Why is that? What about her makes you so angry? Has she done something to you? No. She does nothing. Nothing but cry. She weeps over her judgment. She sobs that her life is not fair. Cry, cry, cry. And that makes you angry? Very. Why would that be? She is weak. Is that not enough reason? Your definition of weakness seems quite broad. I imagine many people you meet would seem weak to you. Do they all infuriate you? Not like she does. So what makes her different? I do not know. I think this is important. Let's go deeper. When was the last time she angered you? Yesterday. I was trying to read. She was crying. So was it the distraction that angered you? Yes, but that was a mild irritation. The prison is filled with many distracting noises. I became more angry when she explained her story. Her story of what she did that brought her here? Yes. She killed her abusive husband. And you found that enraging? That her husband was abusive? No. Her weakness is enraging. Her husband abused her because she was weak. Because she allowed him to. And she allows the inmates to abuse her too. Just because someone is abused doesn't mean it is their fault for being unable to fight back. You are wrong. It is not the victim's fault for being the target of a crime. It is the criminal's fault for perpetrating it. What do you know of it? I'm a therapist. I'm kind of the expert in blame and fault. If someone threatens you, you strike them back. If someone strikes you, you kill them back. These are the simple rules. Those aren't the rules, though. If someone threatens or strikes you, you call the police. Escalating the situation is how people end up in here. So you would have others solve your problems? Not always. But with these sorts of problems, yes. Fighting back was what got her here. So you would abdicate that a woman not fight back when she is attacked? Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. Then what are you saying, doctor? I just mean that this is clearly something for the police to assist with. When? During the beating? After? Would you advocate curling into a ball to minimize damage, hope the attacker does not kill you, and then crawl to the police when they leave? I'm not... I just... What do you think? This is your pattern. You tell me how wrong I am. I present the flaws in your logic. You turn it back on me to answer. You answer me, doctor. You have all the answers about what I do wrong. So tell me, how is this situation to be handled? You make a good point. I apologize for dodging the question because it was difficult. I do not need your apology. I am accustomed to winning. Right. This is a highly sensitive topic. I certainly believe that anyone, women included, have the right to defend themselves. I also believe that we should not take the law into our own hands. I imagine your cellmate's case lies somewhere on that spectrum. On this imaginary spectrum of strong to weak? Yes, it does lie there. In weakness. So not fighting back is weakness? Of course. 
So you've always fought back. Never had to endure anything you didn't want to? At times. I suppose I have, yes. So why does it make you so angry when it is about her? Are you thinking of the times when you couldn't fight back too? Perhaps. Is your anger really directed towards her or toward those who have hurt you? Perhaps even toward yourself? I... Do not trick me. She is the cause of my anger. I think what you're experiencing is empathy. You're feeling her pain, and it is reminding you of your own. Thomas also spoke of empathy. Your brother? Yes. He spoke of it as if it were normal. Yet I know nothing of empathy. Whether you think you understand it or not, I believe you're feeling it with your cellmate. She is nothing like me. Yet you've both been mistreated and unable to stop it. You're remembering how bad that felt, and you're realizing that she felt that too. What would you do if you were there when her husband attacked her? Nothing. I don't believe you. You know what it feels like to be a victim. It would be for her to stop it. But what if she can't? No matter the reason, would you watch a helpless person be harmed if you could do something? I... I do not know. Helplessness is weakness. And weakness deserves nothing. I do not wish to speak any longer. We still have time. Then spend it listening to your terrible music. Yes. Still Moby Dick? No. I am now reading The Dark Half. Stephen King? That's a big jump from Melville. This one appealed to me. That's cool. I always liked Stephen King. He has other books. Just a couple. Wait, you're serious? You don't know Stephen King? I do not. You know him. I mean, not personally, but, um... He's written dozens of bestsellers. You're not familiar with him? I am new to novels. I learned to read with other things. Oh, well, if you like that one, I can recommend some more like it. Do not try to be kind to me, Cassandra. Sorry. I, I mean, I'm not sorry like it's my fault or something. I guess I say that a lot. Um, can you please call me Cassie? Everyone choosing inferior names as if the ones they were given are somehow inadequate. A name is precious. I guess I've always just associated my name with... I do not care. I'm sorry. Oh, that's it! Your apologies are just another sign of your weakness. Who gave you those bruises? What bruises? The ones on your back and sides. You can't cover them in the showers. Nobody. Who gave you those bruises? Crystal! I know Crystal. She works in the kitchen with me. Did you fight back? No. I told you I don't want to fight. But you must. How else will you end these beatings? I don't know. You know her. Maybe you could say something to her. Say what? Please, cease your attacks on this helpless victim. Well, yeah, but maybe a little less mean. I will help you, Cassandra. Do not make me regret it. So, you'll talk to Crystal? No. Ah! How is that helping? Block. Ah! Stop! So block it. Shit! Stop hitting me! Stop me! Good. Ugh. Stand straight. A punch to the stomach should not keep you down for long. Stop hitting me! Yes, get angry. Feel that. Remember how it feels when Crystal hits you. Remember how it felt when Alan hit you. Shut up! Yes, you are done being weak and sad. Remember how it felt to fight back. 
to stop his abuse. Don't say that! Remember! No! Good. You have heart after all. I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt you or anyone. Fighting is not about what. It is about survival. I will train you as I was trained. It will hurt, but Crystal will no longer hurt you. Is that a good trade? Yes, because the next Crystal will not hurt you either. Crystal. Yeah? I recommend you no longer seek out and harm Cassandra. Who? Cassie. She is now under my tutelage. If you come at her again, you will not find her so easy a target. And if you do so when I'm having a bad day, I may beat you to death with a rolling pin. You wouldn't. I am already in prison for murdering my parents. Where would they send me next? Prisoner, prison. You've been cautioned. Feel free to ignore it. Now leave. I shall clean the rest on my own. Guards have been distracted. Stand and face us, fetch. I've been waiting for this. I did not expect the court to send constructs to assassinate me. That displays poor strategy. The Magister would have had me killed in a prison yard fight or dead in an accident. His successor sent three constructs built just to kill me. We have our orders. You are deep in changelings, just automatons, little more than Bargast. You will find us more difficult to command. Will you face us? Do you know that they offered me multiple jobs here? I could have done laundry, made crafts to sell, distributed books. I chose this job. Do you know why? Cast iron skillets. Do you know how much force it would take to kill us with a blunt skillet? I have two. Do you really think we would stand still long enough for you to beat us? It doesn't matter whether you have one, or one in each hand. Come then. Come at me. Goodbye, Fetch. I learned this from my sister. <gasps> If you listening altars know this, I'm no longer your pawn. I am inmate 14999. I am McKenna Thorne. Hi, McKenna. Thomas.
Thanks. You could wait outside. You returned as promised. On time, even. How have you been? I am now a good person. You... Uh, what? Like Phoebe. I am a good person. I really don't follow. You know Phoebe. She is friends with Monica. Phoebe often helps others. She taught music to children. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. I am like Phoebe now. I am good. Well, okay. That's great. I'm glad that you're trying to be a better person. I do not try. I am good. What good things have you been doing? I have taught Cassandra to defend herself by repeatedly striking her until she successfully parries. Um, okay. So while I appreciate the motivation, I don't think repeatedly striking someone is a good act. I also threaten to kill the inmate who bullies her. Oh, I think maybe we need to go over the definition of good. My therapist says this is empathy. If you're doing it to help Cassie, then yes, you're feeling empathy for her. I had not realized the important connection between empathy and violence. I now appreciate empathy much more. Baby steps, I guess. This is mostly progress. So... How have you been? Did you just... What? I asked how you have been. I'm... Actually doing pretty well right now. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. I've been thinking about what I'll do for a job going forward, and I've been- I asked how you are doing, not what you are doing. I do not care to hear you prattle on about your weird hobbies. Don't be such a Ross. <sighs> Baby steps. I am bored. Come back tomorrow with more to discuss. Read Moby Dick. You want me to come back tomorrow? Or next month. I do not care. No, no, I'll come tomorrow. I'll see how much Moby Dick I can read by then. You read slowly, like a small child. <laughs> yes, I suppose I do. Bye, McKenna. Goodbye, brother. Hayden Rider's Movement presents The Hidden People. Executive Producers Chris Burnside and Megan Burnside. Producers Alexa Fett Fisher, Xander Hildebrandt, Emily Kallenberg, Stephen Kallenberg, and Jordan Lopez. Lead Writer Chris Burnside. Script Editor Alexa Fett Fisher. Sound Design, Score, and Original Music by Catherine Seaton. Sound Engineer Colin Susich. Theme Song by Catherine Seaton and Michael Yates. For more of The Hidden People, visit our website at hiddenpeoplepodcast.com. <laughs>